What is going on guys, Q Knight Z here, and today we're going to be going over 5 World at War weapons that we never saw the return of, were left out and ultimately forgotten in Black Ops 3 Zombies. These are going to be the 5 weapons that I personally think were the most iconic from World at War Zombies, and weapons I truly wish hadn't got forgotten back in the old games. I mean, I wish we'd gotten them in at least one of the Black Ops 3 Zombies map. Obviously, we did see the return of the Ray Gun, the PPSH, and the Wonderwaff, so those will not be included, but everything else from World of War is fair game. I want to quickly thank you guys, 82,000 subscribers already. My channel has gained over 20,000 of you guys just in the last 30 days, so thank you all so much for that, and in appreciation, I picked up a couple pairs of these Zombies in Spaceland Control Freaks, one for each console. If you want to win those, Literally all you have to do is click the link in the description. It is a link to my pinned tweet on my Twitter profile. Like that tweet and follow me. Obviously you have to be following me to enter. Um, and I'll pick somebody who liked that tweet and I'll check their profile if they're following. I'm just going to do one of those random generators so I need there to be a tweet for you to like. I really never do giveaways but I figured this would be something small and nice to do for you guys. I'm sure not a lot of people will enter. So you'd probably have a pretty good chance of winning. I mean these control freaks are actually badass. They're the ones I use personally. Hype for Infinite Warfare Zombies. They glow in the dark. But anyways guys, if you do enjoy this video, I would love it if you left a like, and let's get into this. Our number 5 spot goes to the STG-44, and I was truly shocked that we didn't see this gun back in Black Ops 3. At all. I mean, this seemed like such an obvious weapon to return, at least as a multiplayer remake, and if not that, just its base variant in Zombies. I mean, we've had this gun in every single game so far. And it was always one of my favorites, although the Black Ops 2 version on Origins was definitely the best once combined with Double Tap 2.0. I mean, this was always my go-to weapon if I ran out of ammo on Reese. Usually I would have my classic MG42 and PPSH set up. I'd run out of ammo in one gun or maybe in both mid-round and I would almost always have to go ahead and buy myself the STG. And upgraded, I mean, this thing became even more of a beast, becoming the Spats 447, which again was my go-to wall weapon on Origins. And... I really do miss this gun. I mean, I'm sure it'll be one of the first to be brought back through Black Ops 3 mod tools. It was definitely one of my favorite World of War weapons, and it comes in at number 4. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have the 357 Magnum, and this one is a personal favorite. I mean, I've always loved the really strong pistols in Zombies, and this one is no different. But the thing that's different about this weapon, actually, is it truthfully isn't very good. It's one of those guns that every time you get it out of the box, you kind of want to give it a chance just because you love it. Kind of like the ray gun in Black Ops 3. And I didn't want to just pull facts out of the air here, so I did a little bit of research on this weapon, and this pistol becomes a two-shot at close range on round 14, even when pack-a-punched, which makes it even worse. I mean, it's crazy to think about. What's even more interesting is pack-a-punching this weapon actually does absolutely nothing. The ammo stays the same, the damage stays the same, and the reload speed stays exactly the same as it comes default with a speed reloader in Zombies. And the only thing that changes when Pack-a-Punched is the range, which, I mean, is kind of nice, but it really doesn't matter all that much in Zombies. Regardless of how powerful it is, it's a very fun weapon to use. It's already been brought back into Zombies on Madgaz's new map. I really like it for whatever reason. It was a weapon I would have loved to see the return of in Black Ops 3. And it comes in at number 4. Number 3 is where the sadness really begins, and it's where the Thompson lies on this list. And I remember when Black Ops 3 was getting near its release date, probably about a month and a half prior, and we all found out that Darice was being remade. And people lost their minds. I mean, after the hype had went down, the first question on nearly everybody's mind was, will the wall weapons be from World at War? or Black Ops 3. When Darius was remade for Black Ops, they changed the box guns, yet kept all of the original wall weapons, and so many videos were posted of people just speculating whether we'd get the trench gun, you know, all those classic World at War weapons on the wall, or if they'd be replaced by Black Ops 3, you know, equivalents. And when I first played the Giant at like 12.30 in the morning on November 6th, I was just a little bit disappointed when, instead of a Thompson, I was given a VMP off the wall. I mean, we did get the Tommy gun in Revelations, which a lot of people, for whatever reason, so people don't roast me in the comments, they think it's the same thing, but they are completely different weapons. And a lot of people don't realize the Thompson was one of the best wall weapons to have for high rounds on World of War. I mean, it doesn't carry a lot of ammo, 
but it has a really decent wall location on almost every single map, and its high rate of fire just made it one of the best weapons for getting kills, as well as racking up points for hitting the traps on Darius. I mean, the Thompson has actually been already ported into Black Ops 3 through mod tools. I saw some gameplay of it on Shadows of Evil just the other day, and I am very much looking forward to using it on some future custom maps. But the Thompson, it's an amazing weapon, one of the greats, and it comes in at number 3. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have the Trench Gun, and truly, who didn't love this weapon in World at War? On Shinonuma, it was a gun you always wanted to have on the higher rounds to take out the dogs, and on Doris, once Pack-a-Punched into the gut shot, it became one of the most powerful weapons on the entire map. I have so many fond memories of sitting on the Doris catwalk with a few buddies, just trying to hold off the zombies with only our Pack-a-Punch trench guns, and while that definitely wasn't the most effective or safe strategy, it was just so much fun, and this gun... I really think would have been a perfect fit into Black Ops 3 Zombies. If you combine this weapon with Double Tap 2.0, I really think it would have held up with the shotguns of Black Ops 3. It probably would have been like a KRM with a bit higher damage and a slower rate of fire, but I'm actually a bit surprised they didn't put the KRM where the trench gun was on the Giant, just now thinking about it. Instead they replaced it with the CUDA. It really would have been completely fitting, but the trench gun, I'm pretty sure everyone who played World at War really misses this thing, and it comes in at our number 2 spot. Number one is probably pretty obvious at this point. When you think about weapons from World at War, you think of the Wonderwaff, you think of the PPSH, and you think of the MG42. And yes, I know there were completely useless turrets on Garode Krovi called the MG42, but it definitely wasn't the same in any way, shape, or form. The MG42, unlike some of the other weapons on this list, was one of the best guns to have on every single World at War map. Unknocked, it was hands down the best weapon to have while camping. It was a lot like the Browning, which didn't make the list even though I do love that weapon so much. But it was like the Browning with higher damage and a way faster reload. On Verrucked, it was great for any camping strategy you may have with friends. Although it was pretty horrible, admittedly, for training, as the zombies were faster than Keem himself on Verrucked. On Shino, it was just great to carry you until you were able to get the Wonderwaff out of the box. And I don't think I even need to explain why it was amazing on Doris. I mean, once Pack-a-Punch, you got the Barracuda FU2, or Barracuda FU all, something like that. I mean, it was just so, so good. And I was so excited when I saw the MG42 in the trailer for Garode Krovi. I think everyone was pretty disappointed when we weren't actually able to use them in-game. But as far as some other weapons you guys may miss, I actually was pretty surprised at how hard it was to choose only five for this list. I mean, World of War had so many great iconic weapons. I mean, the Browning, like I said, didn't make it, although it was amazing. The Type 100 was one of the greats, although the Sten or the Bootlegger from Shadows of Evil is very similar. And I know people just have their personal favorites for sure, especially from World at War. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, I would really, really appreciate it if you could drop a like. And if you're new around here, I'd love it if you subscribed. I mean, I absolutely cannot believe how fast this channel is growing. At the beginning of the summer, I had 7,000 subscribers for crying out loud, and now we're sitting at a little bit over 82k, so thank you guys so much for that, and I'll see you all later. Also quickly at the end of this video, I just wanted to let you guys know once again about that giveaway I'm doing. There is a link in the description, literally all you have to do is like the tweet that it takes you to. I kind of had to have a tweet for you to like, otherwise there wouldn't be a fair way to pick a winner and pretty much I'm going to put you into this, this website that will pick a random winner from the people that have liked a tweet. I don't really know how it works, but I saw Lagan, my friend Lagan, use it. And I'll pick one of you guys, I'll click on your profile as long as you're following, I will hit you up with a follow and a DM, and you'll win those. Honestly, I haven't pimped out my Twitter since I had like less than 10,000 subscribers, so this would be a good opportunity to give back to you guys, as well as uh, just kind of grow my own Twitter, grow my social media, because I kind of completely forget about my social media 95% of the time. But anyways guys, I just want to throw that in there at the very end. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, peace out. Well, I think that I'm through with the girl I thought I knew But I guess I didn't know her well at all But I'm getting sick of Janie's latest pick She's headed for her own decline and fall Janie took the razor blade and cut off all her hair Had swastikas and iron crosses tattooed everywhere And she can't concentrate on anything but help And she's out of control I used to think I loved that girl But now I just don't know her She's a no-city